the seven ages. In my first dream, the world appeared, the salt, the bitter, the forbidden, the sweet. In my second, I descended. I was human. I couldn't just see a thing, beast that I am. I had to touch, to contain it. I hid in the groves. I worked in the fields until the fields were bare. Time that will never come again. The dry wheat bound, caskets of figs and olives. I even loved a few times in my disgusting human way. And like everyone, I call that accomplishment erotic freedom, absurd as it seems. The wheat gathered and stored, the last fruit dried. Time that is hoarded, that is never used, does it also end? In my first dream, the world appeared, the sweet, the forbidden. But there was no garden, only raw elements. I was human. I had to beg to descend. The salt, the bitter, the demanding, the preemptive. And like everyone, I took. I was taken, I dreamed, I was betrayed. Earth was given to me in a dream. In a dream, I possessed it. <coughs> the Balcony. It was a night like this at the end of summer. We had rented, I remember, a room with a balcony. How many days and nights? Five, perhaps, no more. Even when we weren't touching, we were making love. We stood on our little balcony in the summer night. And off somewhere, the sounds of human life. We were the soon-to-be-anointed monarchs, well disposed to our subjects. Just beneath us, sounds of a radio playing, an aria we didn't in those years know. Someone dying of love, someone from whom time had taken the only happiness, who was alone now, impoverished, without beauty. The rapturous notes of an unendurable grief, of isolation and terror, the nearly impossible to sustain slow phrases of the ascending figures. They drifted out over the dark water like an ecstasy. Such a small mistake. And many years later, the only thing left of that night, of the hours in that room. Decade. What joy touches the solace of ritual? A void appears in the life, a shock so deep, so terrible, its force levels the perceived world. You were a beast at the edge of its cave, only waking and sleeping. Then the minute shift the eye taken by something. Spring, the unforeseen flooding the abyss, and the life filling again, and finally a place found for everything. Obad. There was one summer that returned many times over. There was one flower unfurling, taking many forms. Crimson of the monarda, pale gold of the late roses. There was one love, 
there was one love, there were many nights. Smell of the mock orange tree, corridors of jasmine and lilies, still the wind blew. There were many winters, but I closed my eyes, the cold air white with dissolved wings. There was one garden when the snow melted, azure and white. I couldn't tell my solitude from love. There was one love. He had many voices. There was one dawn. Sometimes we watched it together. I was here. I was here. There was one summer returning over and over. There was one dawn I grew old watching. Summer night. Orderly and out of long habit, my heart continues to beat. I hear it, nights when I wake, over the mild sound of the air conditioner, as I used to hear it over the beloved's heart, or a variety of hearts, owing to there having been several. And as it beats, it continues to drum up ridiculous emotion. So many passionate letters never sent, so many urgent journeys conceived of on summer nights, surprise visits to men who were nearly complete strangers, the tickets never bought, the letters never stamped, and pride spared. And the life, in a sense, never completely lived, and the art always in some danger of growing repetitious. Why not? Why not? Why should my poems not imitate my life? Whose lesson is not the apotheosis, but the pattern? Whose meaning is not in the gesture, but in the inertia, the reverie? Desire, loneliness, wind in the flowering almond, Surely these are the great, the inexhaustible subjects to which my predecessors apprenticed themselves. I hear them echo in my own heart, disguised as convention. Balm of the summer night, balm of the ordinary, imperial joy and sorrow of human existence, the dreamed as well as the lived. What could be dearer than this, given the closeness of death? Fable. Then I looked down and saw the world I was entering that would be my home. And I turned to my companion and I said, where are we? And he replied, Nirvana. And I said again, but the light will give us no peace.
Thank you. 